Hi guys, this is Roscoe with my review of the DX10 T800 figure by Hot Toys. Let's get straight into it and look at the box. As you can see we have a simple coloured box, plain black. What I think is very special about this box though is it has a vinyl like contact feel to it over the top which uh, is a nice touch because it resembles the leather jacket worn by the T800 throughout the film. You've got the Tex T2 on the front which instead of being raised it's lowered. You've got the nice black shine to it so it creates that look of texture. Down the bottom we've got the Terminator 2 Judgment Day logo. T800 in bright metallic. They're all lowered as well. So you can see the reflection there. It's quite reflective. Got all the other little logos down the bottom there. All the companies and the logos there. So overall quite nice. Very elegant. Uh, very solid as well. Um, you've got the grey section at the top here. And another feature to resemble the jacket. You've got these so a button section here, top and bottom, uh, which are the magnets which um, hold the box closed. So once you open that up, like typical style we get with the DX packaging, you have a cover page which I'll show you shortly. You have this sort of stencil cutout, which is made of cardboard, over the top. Uh, you get to see the figure and some of the accessories underneath in this foam layer here, which is on the top. Underneath the foam layer you have a plastic tray which holds the stand and the remainder of the accessories. Now what's nice, what they've done is, instead of hinging the box here, uh, which over time is prone to breakage, they've hinged it here, so when you lie it flat on the table or on the ground, it's not going to put as much stress on it and tear it over time. So it's good that they've done it this way. On the inside of the page, you have that T800 style vision. It says, I know now why you cry, but it's something I can never do. So that's a nice subtle touch from the film. Once again, T800 logo down the bottom. It's overall excellent packaging I feel. This is one of Hot Toys best, in my opinion. Snapshot really well too. Nothing much on the back, just the same black with the warning label, which we get on all the Hot Toys boxes. So. Uh, once we open that pa um, this box up, we have the cover page, which uh, covers over the figure. So before you get to see the figure, this is what you are greeted with. Looks pretty nice. It's got the foam backing, like on all DX um, pages. You've got the satin tab, so it's easily removed. You've got this cool little feature. What they've done is added these sliding little windows. So they can slide shut like that say T2, where you can slide it open to reveal uh, the facial sculpt of the figure. So that's quite nice, something different. And you got some text down the bottom about the film. So overall, excellent packaging. One of my favourites by far. Alright, accessories. Get your user men manual or user guide. You get uh, your shades. You get this little headpiece cap, you get the sort of this little cover piece and the microchip. Um, that's so you can uh, replicate the scene where they're um, resetting his memory so he can learn. Uh, you got the scalp piece and the pliers as well, the needle nose pliers. So it's excellent they've been able to add all those. Uh, he looks really good with the glasses on, but I'm keeping it the movie accurate look. Or is in Cyberdyne, so I won't be using those. But um, they are very small, that's something you need to keep an eye on, either keep in this little uh, package here, or um, put most of those parts in his actual head, so you know where they are and they stay safe. Because, yeah, once you drop those, um, it's going to be almost impossible to find, they're so tiny. Alright, you get this awesome minigun. Now, I kick bash the old MMS version, so it's, I'm not as excited to get this as um, you know, probably other people would have. It's a nice piece. Um, you know, you've got some subtle sort of grey highlights over a plain black sort of paint job. 
it doesn't move it's all solid piece of plastic um, so it's pretty good for those of you um, never kit bashed with the Koo accessories I you know purchased all the the Koo model accessories so I could replicate the scene um, at an early stage with my MMS version so um, now that I've got this I've been able to change that back to the Galleria look which I like as well so it's given the option to have you know two figures posed differently which is nice uh, you get the handgun you get four uh, spare gloved hands I've got uh, two of them on the figure at the moment so six gloved all up and you get two spare plain hands there you get uh, your spare hand pegs they're very stiff to go off the figure so be careful with those you don't break them so that's why they're giving us spares which is always handy we got the shotgun which we got with the MMS version so we also got the handgun as well but um, overall uh, very good amount of accessories you also get the bandolier with the grenade launcher shells they look really good and you get the grenade launcher looks really cool now as I mentioned just before I um, bash the MMS with the Kumo accessories. I'll just show you some of the differences with those. Um, here we have the Hot Toys sort of um, shells as well or ammunition. It's like a nice rubber. Now with the Ku version that's what we got here. Like more like a hard plastic. Now the Ku version was just supposed to be a replica of those weapons not necessarily a um, replica from the Terminator 2 film. They serve their purpose um, well, until the Hot Toys have been able to replicate it from the actual film but um, I suppose they are perfect representations of the actual weapons but not from the film so they're pretty good though so that's what the ammunition looks like the bandolier is here you can see the shells are a different colour, they've got green inside them whereas the Terminator ones are a nice gold and copper colour so that's an improvement there, which is something I'm happy about. It does look a lot better than the kit bash version. Uh, we've got there's the grenade launcher, which you can see is a different colour to the Hot Toys version. Hot Toys version looks more like it did in the film, the dark brown. It's more like a very light brown, or of a ready brown. Uh, pretty much identical in every other way though. And the one thing though I'm more happy about with the coup accessories is the minigun. Now I've got my T2 pose with that. Um, I just feel the Q mini guns a lot more accurate. Uh, you see when he gets the gun out of the sort of the gun shed, which is underground, um, has more of a silver look to it. And this one just has all the labels, all the pins, has more moving parts. Just has it more. It, the Hot, Hot Toys have done it black because that's what it looked like in that one scene. But if you see it in the scene. When they are in the, the sort of the gun shed, um, it does look more like this. It's slightly bigger as well. This one has articulation, so you can spin it. Um, has metal parts as well. So I think this is still far superior than the Hot Toys version, but the Hot Toys one does serve its purpose for collectors who never got this. But for the time being, um, I'll be keeping it with the Koo because I think it looks a lot nicer. But everything else that Hot Toys has been able to do, I think is an improvement on the accessories I bought with the MMS as extras. Now I didn't get around to getting the bag. Um, that's something that I didn't realise Koo made, but I think they did. Theirs was a little bit bigger, which I think is a bit more accurate as well. Um, I'm happy that I've got the Hot Toys one. It's not something I'm you know, complaining about. It serves its purpose, it looks like it does in the film, but if I was to nitpick, the Koo one's a little bit bigger, and I think in the film it was a little bit bigger, because it did fit most of that gun in it. Whereas if you compare this bag to the gun, um, it's only half the size. But it um, looks really good. And my kit bash version, I never had the bag, so it just feels a lot more complete now. Alright, so let's go have a look at the head sculpt. Um, a lot of people complained about this head sculpt 
looking worried, scared, uh, too youthful. Uh, I don't remember Arnold looking like that when he was younger. I thought he had a more fuller face when he was younger. Um, if you look at this sort of section that the, the pose is trying to replicate in the film, he does look sort of slender in that, um, that scene, uh, more so than the rest of the, the film. So I think they've done a good job there. Um, looking at earlier pictures on Facebook, you sort of uh, see that the purse throws it off a little bit. But now I've got it in hand, I was expecting something a little bit worse. It's actually it's not too bad. Um, it's not very photogenic, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but in hand, it actually surprised me. Um, the purse, I don't think they needed that much. This is a sort of character that has one particular stare or look. And just that millimetre off with the eyes, it looks all wrong. There's only just a small section where it does look really good. So I think the purse is pretty, you know, useless with his figure unless you get in that one spot. So it's not really something you want to play around with and put it in different spots because it's just not going to look accurate enough. That's my opinion anyway, but once you do get in that small margin, um, it does look really good. So get a bit closer there. I think it looks a lot better than the prototype. I thought the prototype looked absolutely terrible, to be honest. You can sort of see the seam there for the purrs. Pops off there. Pretty similar to the DX Joker, the Jack Nicholson version on an 89 Batman film. Uh, it seems not that bad. In the top here you've got another sort of seam. Let's see if I can get that out. So you remove that hair piece. You can see the top of the endo skull. So that hole, hole in there. The blood look. That's where you put the microchip and the other couple of parts which I showed earlier in the accessories. This looks really cool and gross, so that's something we never got in the MMS, so those fine details like that make a lot of difference. Now that comes off really easy too, so that's something to keep an eye on as well. We've got his leather jacket, looks really nice. I think it's more like real leather, this one, than the MMS version. The bag also, when I got it, it's sort of like got cardboard in it. You have to sort of bend that so it sort of sits around his shoulder a bit nicer. This one doesn't come with a black shirt where the MMS did. The bandolier also has the metal part on the back, which we saw in the film, whereas the coup one didn't. So that's another accuracy, which I'm happy about. Got the leather pants. I think the body looks a lot nicer. Getting it into a pose to hold the minigun um, was a lot easier than the MMS. The articulation was a lot easier to get it in that pose. The MMS sort of held it a bit further away from his body. This one looks a lot nicer, more accurate. Yes, yeah, so overall I'm very happy with this. A lot happier than I thought it'd be. You got the weathering the boots there as well, looks really nice. And you got that uh, light up stand which we saw with the Kevin Flynn Tron figure. So. Let me just switch that on. Looks like a sort of Cyberdyn factory sort of theme there, which is cool. So overall this did cop a bit of flack earlier on, but I think a lot of people are warming to it. Um, I think it looks a lot better than the MMS. I'll just get the MMS and do a bit of a quick comparison. does make the MMS look really old and off, to be honest. I thought that was such a nice figure when I got it. This one I think shows it up quite a lot. But it allows me to have it with the black shirt and the shotgun from the Galleria look. This one also comes with the box of roses and the endo arm, which I think is a nice touch, which this one doesn't come with. So I'm glad that Hot Toys do that sort of stuff, is make them both different. So this one I don't think is obsolete because there's things you can do with it that you can't do with this. So I'm happy that they, they're doing that with figures. Because it just sort of resembles a different version, not necessarily a replacement. Yeah, so there we have it guys. I um, hope you enjoyed this review. And if you're sort of on the fence about uh, getting the DX10, 
Uh, I don't think there's anything to worry about. You'll be very happy with it once you get it in hand. Um, if I was never to have this, this is definitely the, um, the scene I would have wanted to buy with the minigun. Obviously why I keep bash this one in the first place. Uh, also looks good with the grenade launcher look as well, which not many people have done so far, but does look excellent. And I don't think Hot Toys have shortchanged us by releasing this you know, before the battle damaged, uh, because it's just going to match the battle damaged a bit nicer than that one will. And it's a different look from a cool scene in the film, so um, I'm quite happy to have it at the collection. And I'm very much looking forward to the battle damage. Probably pick up a couple of those because I like it posed in a couple of different battle damage looks. So there we have it guys. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, please feel free, free to leave comments and um, get back to them as soon as I can. Thanks guys. Bye bye.